Right, so as I explained, the purpose of video in this part is just to give people a taster um, at home who might not have come to a PPG meeting before as what a PPG meeting is like at Parkside Medical Practice. Um, so we're just recording a small snippet of it and that's the uh, practice update segment um, and uh, hopefully it'll encourage some people to come along um, if they uh, like what they see and want to get involved with the PPG. Uh, so this is the practice update. Uh, we try and do an update similar to this on these sorts of headings at each patient participation group. Uh, so just going through some issues that affected the practice, I think we talked at the last PPG um, about uh, some of the local practice closures and I think one more practice closed after the last PPG. So that's something which um, has left many patients without a practice uh, over in Strelly, so not quite in our um, area. Uh, we've had probably about, we had about 200, 300 registrations as a result of that, Lorna? Getting a nod from Lorna. So we've certainly not been affected in the same way as practices closer to it, but um, it has um, added to the number of patients that we're looking at uh, here. Um, so we like to give you an update on staff changes. So just at the beginning of this week, we welcomed a new doctor to the practice. So it's Dr. John Liu. Um, he's joining as a GP fellow. People. Uh, so the GP fellow scheme is a one-year scheme, uh, and there's an option for them to become permanent afterwards. So, uh, but it's quite a good scheme. So, uh, James was on that scheme last year, and we're currently just sort of closing off negotiations. But it looks like uh, James, Dr. Waldron, is going to become a permanent doctor, having been with us for a year on that scheme. So that's actually very good news. Um, so John is joining us. He started on Monday. He's just going through his induction, um, and he'll be doing two days a week. Uh, the other days he's um, doing project work, and he's working on um, educational. Um, what's the word? tools, uh, like educational programs for paramedics and other people who've worked in other parts of medicine that might be coming to work in primary care. So he's doing that project with, um, with another larger organisation than ourselves. So that's John. Um, we're interviewing for two new reception staff, so uh, we're hopeful that we'll recruit yeah, soon. We've offered the job to yeah. two main perspectives. Okay, so good. Left yes, there's always a bit of, use the word churn I suppose, in, in reception staff. So. Uh, I think one out, but I think two in by the sound of things, so that's good. Um, and then just reflecting on recruitment over the last 12 months, because sometimes I like to step back, and I was thinking actually over the last 12 months we've actually recruited a new partner in Ben, um, who seems to be settling in very well. Um, Lorna's not been with us for quite a year as well, so we've got a new practice manager over the last 12 months. Um, James, again, has not been quite with us for a year, so we've actually in the last 12 months recruited two GP fellows, we've had an additional permanent uh, nurse, Dr. Waldron. Oh, right. You may or may not have met him. Right. He's got a sort of luscious black beard. Um, no, yeah. Okay. He is chatty, isn't he? Nice, yeah. Um, so, two of those. Uh, permanent AMP, so that's Andrew, who's joined us. Um, and actually, we've, we've also got regular local AMP. People might have met Angela Till as well, who's a local, but she's working with us on a pretty regular basis. And obviously, uh, Dr. Savjani has been working with us in that way for about two to three years now. Um, still officially a locum, but he's been um, a fairly regular face with us. And actually we've reduced our reliance on, not reliance, but we've reduced significantly the number of ad hoc locums uh, that we're bringing in to do the odd sessions. So I'm actually quite pleased with that in terms of progress at the practice. So current clinical staff, we've got four GPs, um, many of those part-time, as is often the case these days, two AMPs, we've got two practice nurses, um, and then we've got, I don't know where that additional AMPs come from, I think that's supposed to be HCA, that's Ellie, uh, two phlebotomists, and then I'd say we've got sort of a regular locum GP and AMP, very minimal ad hoc locum usage, so that's positive. Um, we're always trying to use the space that we have to deliver new services, so this chap looks shocked because we've got a vasectomy clinic, which is, is it every week? Is it once a week? It's all time. Which is running alternate Thursdays, so that's a community vasectomy clinic that we can refer our patients into and uh, other practices uh, within Nottingham and perhaps even a wider geographical area can refer into that community vasectomy service. That's positive as well. Um, I think at some point we said we'd try and give you some information about um, sort of capacity and number of appointments that we're providing. So this graph uh, Ben put together, so he's done you know he's done some homework here. Um, this, so these are appointments delivered from our system and the way this is expressed is it's the number of appointments 
per week per thousand patients. So this graph uh, shows that we have, so if we break it down by colour actually, I've got a cursor here. So uh, in terms of GP or ANP appointments, so this is sort of effectively delivering what your traditional GP appointment would be, is the purple line. Uh, from January 2017, we are delivering significantly more. Um, it's not showing, but there is the actual data behind, which is a sort of zigzaggy line. It's just not projecting very well. Uh, and that's the trend line generated automatically by Excel. Um, and so that's certainly improved. The practice nurse appointments has been fairly static. Um, slight increase, I think, which is good. Um, and then that's the, the top line is the total number of appointments delivered per thousand patients. Um, so I think this line here is 70. So we're delivering, no, it'll be here for GP appointments. I think we're delivering about just over 70 appointments per thousand patients. Uh, per week now uh, and 70 is a sort of wide held number of being reasonable service so we're quite pleased with that and as I say this takes into account the increase in the number of patients that we've experienced so we've actually gone up from 7,000 two years ago to nearly 7,700 so nearly a 10% increase over the last two years uh, but this takes that into account because it's per 1,000 patients um, hmm, didn't mean to do that any questions on that People don't want to be recorded. Okay, we, we, we say we give you some data. So, and actually, we're quite pleased with that. And actually, we have recruited more permanent members of staff. I think over those years, and I think that's reflected in those figures. Um, I put this here as a, a placeholder, really, because there's not too much happening with primary care networks yet. There's lots poised to happen, um, and we've spoken about it before. So, we're in a primary care network with eight other practices um, across the Bullwell and Top Valley area. So, there's ourselves, there's Lean View. There's River Lynn, don't want to miss anyone out here. Uh, Springfield, St Albans, Rice Park. Um, you might need to help me out here. I didn't say Queen's Bower. Queen's Bower, and probably ourselves actually, this would be the eighth. Um, don't forget us. Um, and uh, the primary care networks are actually going to be receiving um, a budget to collectively employ members of staff um, to work across the practices. So in this year, and they're currently going through the processes of recruiting, uh, there'll be a what we call a social prescriber, so that's somebody who can um, spend a bit of time with patients and direct them to community groups or other services and um, help address. And it's to be decided what we focus on, but perhaps a focus on mental health or social isolation um, or certain groups of vulnerable people, like the homeless or certain age categories. Um, so that will be useful, um, and that's something to share across eight practices. We'll have to think carefully how we share across eight practices because one person doesn't go that far once they're divided eight, eight ways so we'll have to think carefully. Is that access through reception or through the website? The service is just being recruited into and it's not been decided how that's going to work yet. Uh, similarly there's going to be a, a practice pharmacist who will be attached to the eight practices um, and work across practice. So it's actually good and it, it's, you know, it's fresh money that's not being taken from other parts of our budget so we always welcome things like that. And I think the idea is um, in the future that this, these primary care networks should become sort of community, sort of healthcare, um, use the word families, people use these sorts of language, but the idea is that the district nurses are part of this network and also possibly even schools and care homes and um, sports centres, council services. Alan, do you look at it? It's aspirational, I think, Alan. So let's, we'll see where that goes, but it was just to give you an update that that's something that's, that's happening. Um, and I'm the, I'm the clinical director of our primary care network which um, is good because it's good for the practice to have that level of influence. Obviously I've, I've dropped one clinical session to allow some time to do that. So there we go. Sad faces. Which we have, which we have replaced because we've recruited additional staff. Very good point. Um, so, and I mean that completes the update really. So hopefully those people uh, who uh, watched at home to the, to the end, if there's anybody still watching, might have found that interesting. Those are the sorts of issues that we discuss at primary, at, not primary care network meetings, at our patient participation group meetings. And it'd be great to um, get some more people along and come and join us. Um, I think probably somewhere around this video there'll be a link for you to click and, and register your details. We'll, we'll put that on afterwards. Um, thanks very much. And that's the agenda of some of the other things that we'll be discussing today. Right, okay.